Hey, Troop Loaders, I am Michael Stevens from the YouTube channel Vsauce. What was your background prior to uh, being a kick ass mall pup? Hello and welcome to the Wednesday Soapbox. It's four o'clock, so we're live. Today we're joined by Smari McCarthy of Iceland. He is the leading candidate of Iceland's Pirate Party in the South's constituency. Their party is just a few votes away from winning some seats. And he's here to talk about liquid democracy, what it is, and perhaps why it's needed. So, without further ado, Smari McCarthy, the floor is yours. Great, thanks. It's good to be on the show. Um, so, Hello. for the last couple of years, I've been thinking about methods to increase the ability of groups of people to make decisions. And there are so many decisions that need to be made, and you know, that everything gets a bit complex, and all that complexity is managed on a lot of different levels, from the home uh, up through cities and countries, by everybody all the time. But throughout all of this mess, people are trying to decide things. And representative democracy is the way we make most of the biggest decisions in society. But there's ample evidence that this is just not a very, uh, very good way of making decisions because it leaves most people unsatisfied most of the time. On the flip side, people might talk about direct, direct democracy. So the idea of everybody participating in making every decision. And it's been criticized as being too slow, too inefficient, and of course that not everybody can possibly know everything. So, if we zoom out a bit from this, then we notice that there's actually two formal systems to make decisions in society. One is the democratic system, the uh, system we, where we vote on things, uh, which express the will of individuals towards their society. But then, on the other hand, we have monetary systems, which signal value, intent, and, and individual will. So, money and votes actually turn out to be two sides of the same coin, or, you know, so to speak. But when we talk about money, we often talk about poverty in that context. Poverty is essentially the inability to make personal decisions of a certain type. It's a certain way of eliminating individual cho choice or will. And poverty, poverty in monetary terms limits our ability to buy nice things. We try to battle poverty, but we never, never really talk about democratic poverty, right? So poverty in democratic terms uh, limits our ability to live in nice societies. And that's something that seems like a good thing to battle in, or, or combat, in my, my opinion. So with money, we constantly aim to increase our liquidity. Why not make, uh, aim to increase the democratic liquidity while we're at it? Our societies are currently suffering a major democratic liquidity crisis. Uh, our ability to make personal decisions about the future of our society is limited by the fact that all of our democratic purchasing power is limited to one vote every four years given to us by the government. And if we don't invest it in, in a choosing a political party from our uh, ballot sheet, then we lose our vote. And regardless of what it is we, we actually end up choosing, the return on investment is going to be negative. So I think we can do a lot better than this. There's a lot of uh, good projects out there aiming to make it easier for groups of people to make decisions together. Uh, the idea would be to allow everybody to participate to whichever degree they see fit, and beyond that, put trust in their friends and family to whichever degree they wish. It is so direct delegation. But so you can vote, you can abstain, you can select a representative for either general issues, for particular topics, or for individual issues, and generally everybody gets to participate to whichever degree they want. But there's still the problem that. Our, the traditional poverty politics still has a stranglehold on our societies. And we cannot currently wrest that authority away from, from our parliaments and governments because they do have a lot of legitimacy. So there's a couple of things we can do. One is we can get in there, get into the parliaments, get into the governments, start to, to conduct the legislative changes that need, are needed to shift us away from this po uh, poverty politics model. The alternative is just simply start using liquid democracy systems to help us make better decisions than, than our representatives could ever hope to, 
and slowly repla replace norms of decision making inside our clubs, inside our, our societies. And you know, maybe at some point we might even be able to organize our societies without deference to authority, other than the authority which each of us have. So, Smari, let me let me try and help people at home understand, and, and perhaps you myself as well. Okay. When I imagine liquid democracy, I try to understand it conceptually or visually how this would actually work, what it would actually look like. And as far as I can understand, is it not too dissimilar to the way a website such as Reddit would work, where there are lots and lots of different niches, different topics, different things that people can become involved in, and all of the ideas float to the top based on uh, a kind of um, mass voting session where people can vote many, many, many times in the same day on lots of different things. Is it a similar system to the way that Reddit works ultimately? Yes, of course. There's, uh, there's lots of different ways you can uh, maybe implement this kind of idea. There's, uh, there's currently lots of diff different implementations such as uh, there's one from Germany called Liquid Feedback, there's another one called Apocracy, and personally developing one called Wasail. And all of them differ slightly in how they try to approach the idea of, of collective uh, decision making. But by and large, it's essentially having some kind of website where there's a free market of ideas where anybody can propose a, a suggestion of what should be a decision to be made, whether it's a new idea or whether it's just addressing some kind of problem that's come up. And then, um, then of course, the details come, come further down the line of, of how you actually translate uh, a group of people on the internet commenting on each other's things and, and making upvotes or downvotes or something like that into something that everybody can accept as a decision. So once a decision has been made, or what happens then? Because decisions effectively are made uh, millions of times per day on Twitter, on Facebook, on Reddit, where people submit things and if things go uh, well, people have decided effectively that this is an interesting piece of content. But after that, there isn't really much in the way of authority. Someone has to go out and make these things happen. So how, how do you plug that gap? So there's a traditional uh, distinction made between executive authority and legislative authority. What I'm talking about here is the legislative side, which is basically the decision-making process. But of course, uh, you know, uh, there's this uh, understanding from, from warfare, which is a loop of observe, orient, decide, and act. Here we're just addressing the decision part, not the observe, uh, observation or orientation, nor much less so the acting part. Acting. So, uh, do, you, do you not think that we already live in a liquid democracy then? I mean, everything that goes on online, it sounds to me that the liquid democracy that you're describing already happens. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, for online activities, it, it very much does. But uh, for formal decision making in societies, not so much. So whether it comes down to questions of uh, deciding the tax level, or building an overpass, or um, uh, any kind of uh, thing which which uh, has an effect on on the society we actually live in in our physical reality, this is all deferred to Parliament, which are still operating under this poverty model. So what's next then? So we have these systems that potentially can help us make these decisions in a much more effective way. We can perhaps make decisions quicker. We can yeah. take uh, more decisions than we perhaps could in a traditional uh, debate uh, style. Here in the United Kingdom we have uh, a lot, essentially lots of men sitting on one side of a room and on the other side of the room more men and they argue at great length. Yeah. And eventually, they pass. They pass some kind of law. It's a very, very slow process relative to what's going on online. But as we've discovered, it's already happening. This kind of rapid, free-flowing state of information affairs. What now? How do we turn it into an actual, tangible form of action? So the first thing we need to do is actually um, accept that the old Westminster system of Parliament is not actually very efficient, and much less is it representative of the will of people. What we have there is representatives of representatives representing each other and not really us. So maybe we can slowly do away with that. Maybe by uh, doing things such as collaborative budgeting, which has been done in Porto, uh, Porto Alguer in, in uh, Brazil, 
or we can uh, go into uh, collective decision making as is done here in Reykjavik. There's um, first the question of just getting the parliamentarians and the governments to to let go of some of their decision making authority and allow people to make decisions for themselves. So empowering the individual to to decide on his own life. From there, sorry, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, thank th thanks so much. Uh, I want to read out just one comment from our audience about this. This is from Opay Mix four, five four five two, who says, "Wouldn't it be easier to encourage participation on a local level in this way? You get a clear review of the big picture and what people actually want. So, in a nutshell, why not focus on localism rather than this big stuff?" So if this if this is done correctly, then it should be scale free. Of course, of course, we should use this to organise our our uh, beer clubs, whiskey clubs, or, or knitting groups, or or uh, our our social clubs of whatever type. But we should also use this kind of method to organise the entire planet. There, there shouldn't be any scaling limitations. Smiley, thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who left a comment. Uh, just read a few more out, and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain some of the content that's coming up this week. Joko make oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this. Jogo Magiakiko, I've got that completely wrong. I, I apologise. He says he loves Truth Loader, and Luke Bradburn says, but Westminster is never going to vote itself out of existence, is it? If you've got an opinion on that, let Luke know in the comments. This week on Thursday at 7 p.m., we're having a debate about why we're not as interested in politics as we once were. Perhaps it has a lot to do with the way it's done. Some of the things we've spoken about today with Smari. That's live this Thursday at 7 p.m., so do join us for that. Smari, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a really yeah. interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again next time.